Having an I-cord border on a shawl is one of my favorite design elements because not only does it look really nice, it's also pretty practical, especially for something like brioche that tends to get really stretchy. So having a more sturdy edge helps keep everything in check. And for the perspective shawl, I used a five stitch I-cord border, which involves slipping every other stitch instead of three stitches at once, and you work all the way to the end of the row. You can see in this like lavender section right here, that's the cast on. So that's what we're gonna do today in this tutorial. Hey everyone, I'm Ellen. I'm a knitting pattern designer and educator. Life is hard, knitting doesn't have to be. Let's get into it. So to start this five stitch I-cord cast on, a lot of times with an I-cord cast on, you'll see just like cast on three stitches and then you have to pick up like and find the stitches at the end to complete the cast on. Instead, I just use Judy's Magic Cast On and keep the stitches live so I don't have to worry about picking them up. I will demo this part pretty quickly, but I will link my Judy's Magic Cast On tutorial. So if you need more of a refresher on that, that's a great place to start. I only need to cast on five stitches per needle or 10 stitches total for this. So I don't need too much of a tail, like about like 10 inches is more than enough with plenty to weave in. And then with my needles parallel, I do have a long enough cable here, about a 32 inch cable, because we are gonna need that. So for my first stitch, one and one, two and two, three and three, four and four, five and five. And then this last one, I am gonna do my backwards loop cast or cast on just to lock that in place a little bit better. And you can see our bumps on the back. So now I have my five and five stitches. Just gonna turn these around, almost like you were gonna do a sock toe. If you've been watching this channel, you know I like to knit socks. And I'm gonna take this bottom needle and just pull it to the side. And I'm only gonna work these five stitches on the top needle. I'm not doing anything in the round or anything like that. And make sure I don't grab the tail because that's not gonna be fun. And we're gonna repeat just a couple of rows. So this is gonna be the right side. So I'm gonna knit one and then slip with the yarn in front. Knit one, slip yarn in front. So in the pattern, you'll see it's in brackets. I have knit, knit one, slip yarn front, or S L Y F in brackets times two. So that's knit, slip, knit, slip, and then knitting my last stitch. Now I'm gonna turn my work to the wrong side and it's gonna be the opposite this time. So slip yarn front, knit one, Slip with the yarn front, knit one, slip yarn front. So that is the row one and two repeated or worked once. And you can also see here on this edge, you've got a little bit of a, or you've had, there's, a, on the edge here, you can see that there is a knit stitch that formed after we did that first, first one. So we repeat this four more times, so five times total, because we're gonna to need to pick up five stitches along that edge. So knit one, slip yarn front, knit one, slip yarn front, knit one, and turn. And I'm just letting these other extra stitches just hang out there on the cord. Slip one, knit one, That's twice, knit one. I know I'm on the right side when it starts with a knit stitch and ends with a knit stitch. And then turn, and now, because it looks like when you see a purl in this, that's a slip, and then knit, slip, knit, slip, 
And now you can see we have one, two, three. Knit, slip, knit, slip, knit. That's four times. And this is the last repeat. Knit one, slip, knit one, slip, knit one. Slip, knit one, slip, knit one, slip. And turn it back to the right side. So now that I have repeated this five times or worked it five times, I can see I'm going to start from the cast on edge. Here's one knit stitch that I'll pick up, two, three, four, and five. And if we look here, you can see this looks like it might be where you want to start when you pick up stitches but my working yarn is attached to that. So we are gonna skip that one and move to here, and then we still have those five stitches to pick up. So using my other needle, I like to come from behind and grab both legs. And then we knit through that. So that's one stitch and grab the next one. Knit. And then there's the next one. Oh, split my yarn. Here we go. So that's three, four, and five. So here we have the five stitch edge, five stitches picked up, and this is where Judy's Magic Casts on saves you from picking up more stitches. So we have the five on the needle here, so I'm gonna slide the other needle in. I'm going to add another marker and slip one, or knit one. Slip yarn front, knit one, slip yarn front, and knit one. So now I have 15 stitches total on the needle. 10 of those are the edge stitches. And now I can turn. Slip with yarn in front, knit one. Slip with yarn in front, knit one. Slip yarn front slip my marker, and then I'm gonna purl five. These are the only purl stitches in the entire perspective shawl. So if you do not like purling, you're welcome. Slip yarn front, knit one, slip yarn front, knit one, and slip yarn front. So there we have it. That is our I-cord cast on, and I'm ready to start the first section of the perspective shawl. Next tutorial is going to be our brioche increases and just getting the brioche tweed set up in the shawl pattern.